Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kevin Sullivan channel. Thanks for watching my channel. The topic today on this video, ladies and gentlemen, will be called the difference between the scapegoat versus the black sheep and the narcissistic family dynamic are in general. So ladies and gentlemen, first of all, the definition of the word term black sheep is a member of a family or group who is regarded as a disgrace to them. So ladies and gentlemen, in a normal healthy family dynamic or in a normal health, healthy of uh, whatever type of relationship in all aspects dynamic, a black sheep will be somebody, let's say, uh, let's start with the family dynamic. A healthy, normal family dynamic of a uh, black sheep being a black sheep will be, let's say, of someone who chose a life of crime or just getting any type of trouble and the family legacy is the opposite of that. They're stand-up, good citizen people. You know, with morals, values, principles, and the upstanding people are sometimes it could be righteous, you know, people. You know, church people, holy people. And this, this particular family member or group of people go against that. You get what I'm saying? Or especially in a community as well. You know, they, they, they go against that, you know. So this will be considered a black sheep and you know in a normal healthy dynamic family dynamic or relationship wise another example will be that the family is like prestige like you know going to prestige schools you know like harvard princeton you know um also family of wealth you know um a family of rich a family of you know of people who uh, are great, do great things, you know, um, they're the founder of this bu business, this corporation, and you know, um, they stand at a high stature, 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 and um, and you know, a family from doctors, lawyers, scientists, uh, professors, you know, and the kid or somebody, you know, whoever. Or the group of kids they decide to take another route well i'll just take i'll just i don't want to be a professor i want to be a school teacher a kindergarten or fifth grade school teacher or you know i want to be a photographer or you know i want to go into arts you know i you know i i want to i want to do something else that you know that don't live up to the family legacy the family expectations the family hype you know their forth and so on that would be considered a black sheep of the family and a normal family or relationship dynamic. So also, ladies and gentlemen, this I have to uh, speak about too. So, because this is how it gets, it, it gets twisted of how narcissists actually think and operate. See, now I just explained to you how a black sheep will work and uh, normal family or normal healthy you know relationship of any kind dynamic but with the toxic toxic relationship a dysfunctional dynamic dealing with a narcissistic you know toxic relationship is different so see as for example in a narcissistic family dynamic the black sheep could also be the scapegoat too the, the, the scapegoat of a narcissistic family could be also the black sheep too. They could be the black sheep for any reason, which is don't make any sense at all, which is twisted and backwards. Like, a, 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 you could be the black sheep of a narcissistic family or relationship or a group of people because of the fact that, say the narcissistic family are religious, so-called righteous people, they super religious. You don't go to church, so you're the black sheep just because you don't go to church. And that's just because of that. 
or because you don't go to the church that they own or you don't go to the church that they go to. And as well as another example, how it was different in a narcissistic, toxic uh, relationship or family dynamic of someone being a scapegoat, you could be the scapegoat because you are different from them. Just because you are different from, you know, them or that person, you know, or your family, just because you're different, they'll just label you the black sheep because you are different from them. Narcissists are cult, cult um, like minded people. So everything and everybody has to be the same and be on one accord. Nobody can't be themselves or be different or stray from what they perceive as, what they want to believe as cool, right, righteous, or be different from who they are. They don't like that, they don't accept that. So just because you're different, you could be the black sheep. Also as well, you could be the black sheep because of the fact that you different from them in a way as they're doing bad, doing bad things, you know, or just living bad as conditions or uh, live in a bad way. Like, you know, a life full of drama, crime, you know, and you don't live that way. So this is how twisted they think. So they'll label, they'll label you the black sheep because of that, which is stupid, but that's how they see it and think. Um, you're, 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 you're on a, a good path and you, you want to live a better life than they do. And they want to live a, 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 a life that is no good ahead of nowhere. And this, and also too, this could be, even if you did used to live like them or behave or act like them, but you changed, you changed and changed your life around, they will still label you the black sheep because they are living one way, even though it's bad, you want to live this way and go this way and it's good. They will label you the black sheep for you being different and going another route than they are. It don't matter. You see with them is twisted. They always, narcissists will always change the, the totem pole or the totem post. Um, so now they will also, if they were living a good life or had it as external wise, and you are living a bad life, you know, then they will still label you bad because just for the fact that they're different. Like, you live in this way, it's bad, it's obvious, you know, everyone would say that. But we live in this, this life of, you know, of not like that. So it'll switch. So it'll always a switch depending on them and who they are, how they portray themselves, or what they actually are doing. So the dynamic don't matter. It's just of it being you being the opposite of them or you live in the opposite of them or seeing things or thinking or believing different or opposite of what they are or believe or think or doing or living and with them that's all that matters because like i say narcissists are cult like minded people they all think this way they are all cult like everybody has to be the same and be on one accord everybody has to think the same they can't handle somebody else being different are thinking different from they are. This is why you get in a lot of arguments with narcissists and why a one small little tiny difference or a thinking of an opinion turns into this big thing for no reason, which don't make sense. And also, ladies and gentlemen, you, the, the, the black sheep of a narcissistic family, in most cases of what I see is like not really the black sheep because they're treated better than a scapegoat. You know, they are treated better and look at as better than a scapegoat because this, because with the narcissist, it's all about what's really inside. This would all boil down to of who you truly are authentically, officially as to inside. This is why the black sheep gets is sometimes not even a black sheep because see what you gotta understand narcissists are not good people whether or not how they live internal or external see it, it really don't matter to them you know because they know who they truly are inside 
and the narcissists know that there are no good people. They know that what they're doing is putting up a front. They know actions speak louder than words. They know you being who you are is better than them and that's who you are truly inside, officially and authentically. Narcissists know that they are not, they, are, they know that they are artificial and that they are not authentic. So that's what it always boils down to and this is the reason why they hate themselves and they hate you because it's all about who you truly are to the core you. This is why you can be, I said before, like you can be the scapegoat, you could be the, the black sheep because you chose a better path than they did. They chose the better path and you chose the good path. And even, like I said, it doesn't matter, vice versa, even if they chose the good path, and you chose the bad path, you, they only will label you a black sheep because of that, but you'll still even be the scapegoat for the simple fact that they know even though you're making bad choices in your life, that they still know who you truly are inside and they know eventually you will change your life and it will get better. And they know that's not who you truly are, you're just making bad decisions at this time in this moment. See, with narcissists, ladies and gentlemen, they understand who they are. They know that that's who they, who they truly are. They know that they're not going to change, and they know who they truly are is bad, evil, and toxic. And they know that they're not going to change and never going to change, and they don't plan to. See, they understand that they will always be that way, and they're just putting up a front and a facade. They understand that, and they know that. And so ladies and gentlemen, I see this a lot. Like the, 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 the scapegoat is not, and most narcissistic uh, family dynamic, the black sheep is not really considered a black sheep because the black sheep of a narcissistic family, if they are a narcissist, sociopath or psychopath themselves, the rest of the family not gonna look at them as the scapegoat or the black sheep because they are just like them they're going to look at the person who's this opposite of them that truly authentic that truly officially and authentically is different from them which is a good person a, a empath a righteous person you know a chosen one you know they, they're going to look at them and this is just in any type of relationship whether it's boyfriend girlfriend husband wives or same-sex relationships or marriages whether you know as 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 co-worker co-worker relationship whether it's a uh, supervisor co uh, employee or employee supervisor manager ship supervisor no what no matter what relationship friends best friends family dynamics siblings uh other family you know uh mother uh, parents and gets children um best friends um cousins uncles aunts all relationships, it works this way when you're talking about how it works with narcissists and how it works with the, the dynamic of a healthy non-toxic relationship as far as black sheep, also as well as in the way of the other point that I'm making is with the toxic black sheep dynamic of a narcissistic family and how is the difference, how it works. That's what it boils down to. This is why you'll see, and what I notice is that the black sheep, the narcissist that, that's um, in a narcissistic family who claim black sheep, they're the only ones who consider themselves the black sheep. They like want that title. Like they say it. You don't, I, I don't, from what I see, I don't hear people say like, okay, uh, I'm the black sheep. You know what I mean? They, they say like they're the black sheep. They don't say like, the narcissistic family don't say that they're the black sheep and consider or look at them as the black sheep. The narcissists always the ones who say I'm the black sheep. But you get confused because you're like, well, they don't treat you that way and don't look at you that way. They treat you better than me and look at you different than I do. And you kind of notice because you know how you've been treated and how they look at you, especially once you know about narcissism. And 
even before you even do, you still know like, well, I'm getting treated bad and these people are getting, these other people, my siblings, or other family members get treated better than me. So it's just that the narcissists want the title of the black sheep because of how they live. You know what I'm saying? And they do it because compared to only because their narcissistic parents and some of their family members they are holy so-called righteous people they go to church they're over religious so that's the only reason why i see in most cases that they even say that you get what i'm saying because they used to live how they live or you know they don't know more and but they are still narcissists and not good people because of more what's inside and what they do externally from within inside rather than how they another person would just they stuff is just external because they do so much it's like you know it's like all this stuff that they do that is wrong that against the law that's just wrong morally you know what i'm saying and principle wise and value wise they put up a front and they hide behind you know the bible the church and being religious they hide behind that so they don't really do things that you really can see that's like big and major you get what i'm saying so they get the behind behind that because they could just be who they are secretly and do the devious and evil things that they do and it be low key or it's easy for them just to lie you get what i'm saying because it's not this big thing of you know, everyone gets to see it, it's on display. Like everybody in the community or neighborhood could really say that. But deep down, you know how they are narcissists are evil people because how they manipulate people, how they lie to people, how they treat people and the things they do behind closed doors that nobody else knows about. And it's much more to how, you know, eventually you end up knowing like they still evil and that they are narcissistic people. All the rage into them, how they unstable and things like that, etc. So ladies and gentlemen, I don't think I did this already, but ladies and gentlemen, now the scapegoat is a person who is blamed for the wrongdoings, mistakes, or faults of others. So ladies and gentlemen, now let me, now let me explain this and show you this. Now in the, in the, narciss, in the toxic narciss, narcissistic family dynamic, the scapegoat don't even have to be the black sheep. Like being the scapegoat is just enough. You don't even have to be the black sheep. The scapegoat is enough. You don't even have to be the black sheep of the family because it don't even matter. You know, because look look at this. The, the, uh, the golden child of the narcissistic family dynamic, he could be the person or she could be the person that's doing all this crazy wild stuff like and they will still get looked at as the golden child and better than you you get what i'm saying it and you'll still be the scapegoat because like i said at the end of the day it doesn't matter to them really much about external it's really more about internal so they know that the scapegoat the golden child is just like them you know especially they don't program them from them being a child to them being an adult. And they know the scapegoat is different. They got a mind of their own. You know, they think different. You know, they, they, they're different from them. So narcissists don't like that, especially someone who questions them about what they tell them. Someone who have a mind of their own and have a backbone and have a spinal cord. They don't like that at all. Especially someone who will question them. And so, yes, ladies and gentlemen, and if you in a you know one 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 on one relationship with a narcissist, or as you work at a certain place, you will be the scapegoat because of the fact that you're different from them. They don't like you because you're different from them, and you're not like them. And the reason is because they know that they are no good people, and they are jealous, toxic, evil, hateful people, and they see you as different than them. They think you're really better than them, but you don't really think that. But they think that. So what happens is you be the scapegoat and the scapegoat that's in a family dynamic or any relationship dynamic of any how, as before I explained all, 
you take the blame for them because narcissists can't take the blame for anything. They don't take responsibility for making mistakes. They don't take responsibility for doing things wrong. They don't take ownership of anything. You know, they don't like to be looked at as not perfect. To narcissists, a human being has to be perfect. And if you make mistakes, then you're not perfect. Like you have to be a person who don't make no mistakes like at all. Like, and this is why they'll go enraged and they'll get mad and blow things out of proportion when you say something small or minor to them about something that they were supposed to do that they didn't do or something that they did. You tell them that they did it and they project onto you or gaslight you so that they can uh, switch the dynamic, the energy from them being the fault or the result of something, reason something bad happened or them actually being called out on what they did they use projection and gaslighting to take that off of them because they can't deal with that and handle that so they use gaslighting and projection so it could take the conversation now could be taken off of them this is why they'll start projecting onto you or just lying and saying well you're this and you did that and you you this and that and this is another reason why you can't tell narcissists your business or your secrets because this is a perfect time for them to use that so it's like you know don't say nothing i did wrong because you're not perfect so this is how they see that so narcissists always need somebody to blame something on so now the scapegoat becomes a person that everything get blames on if they driving and they crash you're in a car with them you're the scapegoat oh i crashed because you blase blase whatever you did like that don't even make sense unless i grabbed the steering wheel or I pushed you and the car shoved you a certain way for you to swerve or unless I actually just took over the steering wheel and tried to make us crash, someone tried to make you crash on purpose, then how would I been a, the reason for that? See, you're the reason for this. See, the narcissist won't be able to accept that. So they'll say you're the scapegoat, especially if you're the scapegoat because they don't like you and you will always be the scapegoat because in a relationship one-on-one -on -one with them you have to be or in a big family dynamic or whatever type of group or relationship dynamic one person to be the scapegoat like in a narcissistic family one child will be the scapegoat it could be more but mostly is is one that takes the blame for everything you see in that car crash if you with them they'll say it's you if they want to especially if they don't like you and they hate you if they're in the car by themselves they can say, what well, is the other person for? Even though it was theirs, they was lie. They will not take blame for them being able to do something wrong. These people can't handle it. They can't handle stuff like that. This is why they lie about everything and they deny everything. The scapegoat and then the scapegoat in the family, everything that everything that don't happen, dinner didn't good. If, if dinner not cooked, it's because of the scapegoat where the family didn't cook. It could be a house of a hundred people. It could be a house full of a hundred people that one scapegoat will get blamed for the reason why dinner is not cooked because that one person that they consider the scapegoat did not cook. So one person is responsible for a hundred people not being able to eat. If the house is dirty and it's not clean, the reason the house is dirty and not clean and it's not clean is because that one scapegoat don't clean. Not the fact that Everybody in the house is dirty and filthy and messy and don't care to live like that. It's the fact that that one person refused to, didn't clean or refused to clean after them. Even though in most cases that person is the one of the cleanest persons, persons ever. And they really truly know this, but like I said, narcissists live in denial. And since you, even, even though they're not clean people, since you clean, you're a clean person, then you should be cleaning. Even though they don't even care that the house is dirty, they nasty and filthy anyway. Well, since you, you're a clean person, you should just clean. You know what I'm saying? Make yourself useful. Narcissists love to get people tasks and use them for whatever qualities that they have or talents that they have. Now, when people come over, they can say, well, they, they could get out of them, you know, people saying that they're dirty and nasty. Now, it's like, well, it's not us. It's just this one person the scapegoat they won't clean so this is why the house dirty 
which in the people in the right mind don't make no sense. It's like if you're clean, you're clean. You're going to clean regardless. If you clean, you clean. Like a clean person don't blame nobody for the house being clean or them not being clean. It just don't make sense. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, the scapegoat get blamed for everything. Does the scapegoat as, you know, if you at a job, let me speak on this. If you at a job, the reason why things don't get done is because of you. And what narcissists do too is like when you in this, when you the scapegoat, they sabotage everything and make stuff a problem just so that they can blame you. Sometimes it's just them being them. And when it comes up, instead of them taking the blame and ownership for it, they just blame you. And and then that's 50%. And then the other 50%. Since you're the scapegoat and they hate you and don't like you, they do things on purpose just so you could get blamed for it. And they sabotage things just so they can say, just so they can say well, it was your fault. Just like you work at a job, things supposed to be done. Your boss, supervisors, and the coworkers, they won't do what they supposed to do. And then they will say, give you the responsibility for you doing it without you knowing it. And then when things get get held back or things don't get done they'll say it's your fault or even they'll tell you well you got to take this responsibility and you're like well this is not my responsibility that's him 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 her their responsibility your responsibility i already got my own responsibility this is my job this is what i got hired for so now they think and expect you to do everybody else's job while they relax chill conversate stuff they face with food and just relax and just talk about a bunch of nonsense and they expect you to do everything and they, and, and they don't do nothing. Believe me, I've seen this before at plenty of jobs. I've seen this before. Nobody won't, they just happened to me plenty of times. Nobody won't do work. They will be sitting there talking, conversating, eating, playing around, having fun like little kids and then expect me not, also, not only to do my job, which is my job is a full-time handful job they won't be doing their job and and then and and at the end of the night i'm the one who has to close everything and shut everything down so at the end of the night when things don't get done i have to do everything so that means i'm not coming home to two in the morning one in the morning then they want to come and blame me for why and question me why i'm not finishing my work faster you see what i'm saying even though they doing that on purpose or they know i'm coming in let's say in the morning or i'm coming in that afternoon or evening they won't do things at night so I can have the extra handful in the morning and they won't even get in trouble for it. You know what I'm saying? Or they know I'm coming in in the afternoon or something or in the evening, they won't do the work that they supposed to do all day. So when I come in, it's all this extra work for me to do. So now I'm all backed up, which they know and they do this on purpose. While they sitting around with their evil selves, laughing, playing around, jokes on me, and just stuffing their face full of food. This is this is how the, the scapegoat is treated in every situation. Job, a romantic relationship, friend relationship, community relationship, a narcissistic, toxic family dynamic, siblings situation. This happened. For instance, your family want to have a cookout. You the scapegoat. You supposed to be the one that cook. While they get to sit around, joke, have fun and you cook and you be the slave. The scapegoat to the narcissist, baby, basically the slave. And now like the work situations when things, they did it, they the reason why everything messed up but didn't just blame me. Oh, it's your fault, it's your fault. That's how it works. Wow, this video, half an hour. I ain't even mean for it to be this long. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um. Thanks for watching my channel. Um, I hope this was enough for you guys. I got a lot of requests on this. People actually wanted to know what's the difference between uh, a scapegoat and a black sheep. And I seen a lot of y'all kind of got it, thought it was the same, but it's, it's not. Also, ladies and gentlemen, um, for those who want to email me, you can email me at Kevin Sullivan, 
YouTube at yahoo.com. Like, share, comment, subscribe if you like.